I'm Chris Harvey. I am the Chief Chocolatier of Anne Sun in Beverly Hills. We are a chocolate boutique in Beverly Hills, just off Rodeo Drive on Brighton Way. We've been at the same location for 36 years now, but it was reintroduced as a new brand uh, go, a little bit over two years ago. So uh, we are closed like the rest of um, California for retail uh, business, uh, unfortunately, but we are still very busy online. Lucky uh, that we can keep our uh, chocolatiers uh, uh, working and employed, happy and sane. Uh, but today I'm joining Vince Vitelli from LinkedIn, and we're going to be making the same recipe, but a couple of different ways. I made turtles, so I wanted to do something for Mother's Day. So this is a heart turtle, right? So turtle is essentially, you know, it's pecan with the caramel that Chris is going to make, and then a tempered chocolate on top, right? And, and this is. And this is unique it's because this caramel. is a, a dark chocolate caramel, so it's not it's a caramel, full. Right? Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll get started on this caramel. So uh, we only have a few ingredients, okay? So the, the recipe is over on the business page. So this is dairy cream, inverted sugar or honey, and glucose. If you don't have glucose, I guess you can use corn syrup, okay? But you can find glucose online or at cake decorating stores. And then I have uh, a chocolate from Valrona called Corda Guanaja. It's 80%. You can use 70% Guanaja if you don't have it. But this one has a little bit of water um, fluidity, so it, it's a little bit richer and it'll hold the texture of the caramel a little bit better. Then I have Florida Cell, which is salt from Brittany, France. And in this case, I have um, ground it up a little bit finer because it's, it's a little bit more porous. Sacros, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to start caramelizing it very, just very slowly. Regular, everything you know about. Flat surface on a stone table. 34 centimeters on the interior and one centimeter. And then a couple tools you'll need Matt for exo glass spatula, Matt for high heat spatula. Called Rebio. And then the crisp, this is my invention uh, that I innovated with that and it's made. Um, I'm like a pitch man for every brand uh, in the world, it seems. So that is uh, made with exoplast. It's made in France. I'm very proud of that. Only took me uh, 75 years to get it made. Uh, okay, so we're going to start caramelizing uh, the sugar. And I have a pan that's already preheated um, on the uh, Rebel PolyScience Control Freak. Add the sugar to it gradually. Okay, so you don't put all the sugar in because all it does is take up pan heat and this wastes your time. Okay, so we're gonna slowly uh, caramelize this. We're gonna turn the pan up a little bit, and then um, as the sugar starts melting and coloring a little bit, we're gonna add more sugar until it's all um, melted, and then we're gonna cook the temperature up to 193. And at that point, we're gonna stop. Cooking butter, glucose, honey mixture. I well, remind you again what this is. This is dairy cream, salted butter from France. You can use quality salted butter wherever you're at. Um, inverted sugar, you can use honey if you don't have access to inverted sugar, and glucose syrup. If you don't have glucose syrup, you can use corn syrup. Okay, so, you know, I always see in old recipes, they always like uh, throw water on top of sugar and then cook the water out until the sugar caramelizes. Stop doing that, everybody. Stop doing that. I mean, think about it. If you want to, if you're out camping and you want to build a fire, do you start with a pot of water or do you start with dry camping? So, I guarantee you, 23 degrees, even if there was water in it uh, beforehand, there'll be no water in it at, at 193 degrees. Okay. So you see it, the sugar melting. How's my camera lady doing, everybody? Is she doing okay? How's the, how are the comments? Ooh. Oh, you love watching sugar caramelize. So we have a lot of that. So. Now, the, the advantage of using the control freak is that you can stop the temperature of the bottom of the pot. So I set the bottom of the pot to 200 Celsius. And what that does is it just allows me to focus on what's going on inside the pot. Because sugar is a carbohydrate, which means it's energy. So just like any fuel, it'll just keep taking off and taking off and taking off until you take control of it. Well, the bottom of the pan heat 
I only have to worry about what's going on inside here. So you want to do it slowly and gradually, and this will allow you to uh, have even results in everything that you cook. And that's especially good in, in caramel because once it hits a certain temperature, 90, 92, 93, it starts to take off very, very rapidly. And before you know it, uh, it could uh, get over 200 at that point. It's useless. And a funny story, when I was uh, much younger, uh, finding out all about uh, caramel and that sort of thing, um, I was a very young apprentice to a great pastry chef named Slavon Gaez. And I remember uh, letting a pot just get away from me of sugar, and it turned uh, black, then blue, caught on fire, and put itself out. So it was all the stages of, of what you don't want sugar to, uh, to become. Okay, so don't be intimidated by this recipe. Anybody can make this. I think it's a very easy recipe to make at home. And Vincent had some great ideas by turning into a turtle. And uh, I was just telling the camera lady here, April, that the, any variation you want to do with this caramel, if you want to add vanilla to your cream to give it a sweet vanilla flavor behind all that bittersweet chocolate, you can do that. If you want to increase the salt a little bit, you can do that. If you want to up finally, uh, you can do that as well. It, 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 it's up to you. And if you don't want to use pecans, you want to use walnuts, that's fine too. They're going to stay crunchy once they're roasted and put into the caramel, once the caramel's finished, that is, um, because you've cooked um, the water out. So we have two cooking uh, processes here. We're going to cook the sugar, deglaze and end the cooking of the sugar with the cream and butter mixture, and then we're going to cook all that back to 117 degrees Celsius. And what that's going to do is going to give us the correct uh, texture uh, that we want out of our salted butter caramel. So, Everybody's always asking for the recipes. Well, now you get the recipe. And if you have any questions, you can ask them, and April is going to read the questions to me. I'm going to try to answer them. Right, April? Okay. Any questions so far? Why stir the caramel? Why stir it? So it cooks evenly. So come over here and look. You see how it's hot around the bottom than it is on the top? And we have a little bit of this. I know what you're saying. You think there's this myth that you stir sugar, it'll crystallize. That's that's if you have water in it, but who cares? It's gonna caramelize eventually anyway, it has to. So stop putting water in your sugar to cook it to caramelization. That makes no sense. All you're doing is slowing it down. Okay, more sugar? Any more questions? What is the size of the frame again? Please? The frame is 34 centimeters square. 34 on the, on the interior, okay? And one centimeter deep. 340 millimeters by 10 millimeters. Very easy to use metric. Any more questions? What was the final temperature? Well, we're, we haven't gotten there yet. So we're going to cook, once all the sugar goes in there, we're going to cook the sugar to 193 Celsius. We're going to deglaze with our dairy. And then we're going to do a full cook bath while whisking to 117 degrees. Remove it from the heat. And then we're going to add the chocolate and the salt, and then uh, make sure it's stirred thoroughly and incorporated in uh, thoroughly. And then it goes in the frame. You wait overnight, the next day you cut it. This makes about 172 pieces, and we're gonna cut, we already have one prepared, and we're gonna cut it in a little bit. It is, um, we cut it 37 and a half millimeters by 15 millimeters, and then we wrap it up. And the girl holding the camera is the world's greatest caramel wrapper. In fact, she's going back to the Philippines, unfortunately, we couldn't find her a Blake, a Jake, or any, any other kind of husband. And um, we're going to have to mail her the caramel so she can wrap them and send them back to the States. That's how I outsource my employees. She'll still be paid, you know. Okay, so you see the sugar now? All melted? Okay, so we're going to add a little bit more. You can, you can increase the amount as, uh, as it goes. But uh, no sense in going too fast with this because it could take off all onto its own. More questions? What makes sugar crystallize? Sugar crystallized. Sugar is already crystallized. So here's how they make sugar. Sugar comes from juicing canes or sugar beets. And then they boil it until it becomes one part fructose and one part glucose, okay? Which is 100, okay? So it's 50% glucose, 
that can present fructose. It's just in crystalline form. Adding water to it to boil it, just to caramelize it, makes no sense. So it's the evaporation of the water that you put into it incorrectly, which is causing it to uh, uh, crystallize. But if, if, you, if you still want to continue to do it that way, go ahead, it's your world. But uh, eventually that water will boil out of it and the sugar will caramelize anyway. Or, or just do it my way and you'll be right all the time. Hey, Chris. Yes, yes, Vincent. Sorry, I'll, I'll let you answer that question first. Wait, what's the next question? Daniel's waving. Daniel's waving? My own employee is not working. He's on the internet watching this and waving to me from another room. Tell him to go to hell. Who? Me. All right, what were we going to ask, Vincent? Yeah, I was going to say uh, cooking sugar with wines. If you're cooking sugar for, let's say, pulled sugar. Right, and you want to That's remove correct. impurities, and you want, right? That's then you're correct. going to add or an Italian, acid, and then you know, or Italian it. meringue or something. But for caramel, it's pointless. of course, yeah. But yeah, yeah, what Vincent is saying is correct. So I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with adding sugar to water when you're making Italian meringue or doing pulled sugar or sugar decorations or something like that, because um, you need, you're also adding glucose to it at that point too for pulled sugar for the uh, flexibility and the elasticity. So, any more questions there? Is Daniel asking questions, my own employee? Okay. I'm going to be cooking our, our, our lunch. Should he be making our dinner? Uh, there's one check. So if you do caramel, it will crystallize? If you do caramel this way, it won't crystallize? No, it will not. I, I was lucky I, I trained with an MOF um, confissier named Pierre Mergelet. And, um, he had his MOF in uh, chocolate and sugar candy. So um, he taught me a tremendous amount of the uh, importance of um, cooking sugar, cooking caramels, the cook back temperature of caramels. Uh, uh, sugar candy is like pat and marshmallows. And why sometimes, um, you know, I'm not a huge sugar candy person or a big. Um, but it should be a tool that every patron chef has in their arsenal to make sugar candy. One thing I was, I never learned how to make very well was those uh, sugar candies that you pull that have ribbon in them and, and you put like a case of craving and milk powder in them. They're really great to eat though. And there's Daniel, by the way, being a wise guy over there, waiting to be from uh, another room. And as you can all see, we, we do work masked up. Uh, purposes of this video, but uh, just like the rest of the conditions around the country um, in this unfortunate time, uh, we do use all safety procedures, but for now, because I'm on camera, we are going without a mask. Any more questions? Question. Uh, any substitute for eggs? Any substitute for pastry chef. I don't know anything about vegan uh, pastry or dessert, so I can't, I don't feel qualified. Maybe uh, Vince can answer that question. I know they have egg substitutes, uh, and there's a lot of people that are experts in that, but, um, you know, that's really not my field. I'm glad they're not asking for Yeah, that. I'm not an expert on that, though. <laughs> really? Even though you, you know, Vince has got a unique job over there that, you know, you cook on a corporate campus, essentially, right? And, Silicon Valley, and um, you have all those dietary requirements and all those outlets, and you're cooking for thousands of the same people each day, five days a week, right? Exactly, five days a week, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and you know, huge yeah. team of pastry yeah. cooks, all really talented. But uh, actually, the best part of it is that you do different things every single day, right? So we got we can't have any repetition, ideally. Any other questions coming up there? Why do many people fail when they attempt caramel? What is the common mistake? Why do many people fail when they make caramel? Because they don't respect, the big thing is they don't respect the temperature. They don't think you can put it into a pot, change the color, and then it's caramelized. They don't realize that the actual temperature of the color will determine the texture of the final caramel. I'll give you an example in a simpler way. Let's say you're making Italian 
meringue. And you cook the sugar to 110. The meringue is going to be a lot softer than if you were to cook it to 113. It'll certainly be a lot softer than if you cook it to 118 when you're making your Italian meringue. Also, what will be affected, let's say you take that Italian meringue and you want to fold it into um, TPT for macaron mix. The macaron uh, that's 110 versus 113 will have a much different And caramel is no different. The higher you cook the caramel, the firmer the caramel will be. So uh, Vincent earlier was doing tests on it, what he liked, and he liked the lower temperature for his version of this for the final cook back. I like a, uh, a higher temperature because we wrap this and the person is eating it plainly, uh, not with pecans to kind of change the texture, not with tempered chalk on the back to change the texture. So this is a one that we, we roll up and, and wrap up. But that was a good question. Any more questions coming in? Okay, so in the pot, I have previously warmed up dairy cream, salted butter from Normandy, inverted sugar, and you can use honey if you don't have inverted sugar. You're not going to taste it anyway. It has the same property. So if you don't have glucose syrup, but you can find glucose syrup uh, on Amazon or Take Tech rating stores. Um, or Michael's craft stores, you can um, use, I guess, corn syrup, light corn syrup, the light colored one. Okay, so all the sugar is in. So I'm going to, once the crystals dissolve into it, I'm going to let it caramelize to 193. And at that point, I'm going to rest it with this mixture right here. Okay, easy recipe to make at home with your kids. Don't let them touch it. Caramel is very dangerous. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put a glove on, by the little tip of caramel as well. I'm going to put a glove on once we deglaze it with the cream. And if I get any splatters on my hand or my skin, take that glove off the burn go. So that is something I learned from Susan Nott, a great pastry chef. She, she, when she was married to AWOL, they had their sugar pull in school over in Edinburgh, Maryland. Any more questions? I'm glad the questions aren't personal. I was a little worried about that. Yeah. Vincent, are you, are you still there? Vincent's yeah, falling still there. asleep, everybody. <laughs> I need to stay busy. So, what temperature are you at right now with your sugar? You know, it, it says uh, 175. So, yeah. we're going to see it change here rapidly. And sugar is, like any science, is highly predictable. Okay. Think every time if you do it correctly. So I always tell my cooks that Yeah. We'd... To, when you cook it, you know, even if you, you should always use a thermometer, but when it starts getting about, you know, 185, 186, you'll see like this foam come up here on the edge here. Okay. You'll see a wisp of smoke come up and then you'll see it all kind of push towards the middle. It does it every time because this is a science and the, and the great thing about science is that uh, you only have to study it a handful of times until you realize it'll do the same thing every time. So uh, it, it, it makes you, it requires you to be logical. Okay. There's no mysticism here. We know what this well, is going to do. In fact, what I've learned too, in, in adding on to what you were saying, you know, with, you know, the bubbles and coming to the center, and then you get a little bit of that smoke, right? Correct. Yep. As, as you're getting close to 200 degrees, and that's like the for French people at least, right? I mean, French thought, right? So for French people, that's like that best caramel flavor, where it's like slightly bitter, but not you know, not they dark. They love it. They love it dark. Yeah. Creme, creme brulee is creme brulee for a reason. When you get it done yeah. uh, in France, uh, the creme brulee is, is dark. You know, and and my cannelli, I always say you could go darker if you wanted to. And you know, there's an old saying in France, uh, you know, in Bordeaux particularly, obviously, that the bun isn't done until it's black. So they like them dark. They like their bread darker too. So we're at 188. You see that? You see what is going on now? Okay. So we're almost at temperature here. Well, 188 holding. And I have the Breville Polysense Control Freak set for 213 at bottom. Continuing to stir and pushing it towards my thermometer to make sure my, my results are even, okay? 
Everybody needs to go out and buy a Breville Polyscience Control Creep when they're done here. Actually, I'm going to give you a little tip. In a couple weeks, I'm going to have a discount code. So check in with me. Oh, yes, one's going back to the Philippines. Right? All right, so we're at 190. You see the smoke coming off? The reason I stop at 193, because if it goes up to 195, no big deal. And I don't want to go above 200 because I don't like it that, that dark. You see? It's really not that dark. So don't be afraid of it. What you should be afraid of is when you deglaze it because it can be quite volatile. So you want to be very, very careful. So use a long spatula. And Daniel, can you grab the very long spatula for me so I can show them how long spatulas get? Not that one, but the extra last one. You know, the, the super long one, wherever it may be. We have, we, have, we have a very long one. There you go. That's pretty long, right? Yeah. Okay, so we're about to deglaze here. So let's zoom in here. We're 193. Okay, so we are going to deglaze. Now be careful. A lot of steam, a lot of heat. And if you ever have boiled over a pot of caramel, the only time you'll do it will be that time, I promise you. But you see what happens. This is why I have a long spatula, okay? It seems a little ridiculous. Because underneath that surface of all the, all the dairy, is a very volatile caramel and steam waiting to come to the surface. So don't add all the dairy at once, okay? And don't go in with a short spatula because all that steam will come back at you and, and burn your hands. Or your, one time it happened to me, it was um, uh, my neck, which was not fun. Okay. Wow. So I still, so in goes that mixture of dairy cream, salted butter, glucose, and inverted sugar. And you want to get all of it in there, because it all matters. Sorry to block the shot. That's something, you know, that I, I've done a lot of TV shows and things like that, and you never want to block the shot, so I apologize, camera lady. But this is why, when you do those TV shows, they usually have two to three cameramen and a GoPro cooking above you, so that's my tip. Any more questions coming in? How to control the temperature of a pot without the Just put your flame down on medium. Get used to it. You're going to have failures, but don't be afraid to make mistakes or fail. That's how you get better at something. And it's something that I, I think people, if they're afraid of what the results will look like because they're unsure of their skills, they're never going to improve. You know, the, so you just have to just get going on things, you know, and it, it's all relatable. Okay, so we're going to boil this. We're going to grab the crisp. They hate when I call it the crisp, but I think it's too late. I think the internet world knows it as the crisp. So the reason I, I innovated the crisp with this spring was so it gets into the edging of, of your pot. And there is some sticky sugar here at the bottom of the pot. Uh, but it's also good for making pastry cream, crumb anglaise, um, ice cream base, sorbet syrup, basically anything that, that you cook in a pot for a long time, jam, and it has this exo glass handle, and this little ridge right here is when you rest onto a larger pie is to prevent it from falling in Because it's all ha it's happened to everyone, believe me. So you see, look at the bubbles here. You see how much water's in there? So it's 108, okay, Celsius. So that's pretty hot. But you see the size of the bubble here? That'll eventually uh, as the temperature cooks up. Any questions coming in? Crisp is uh, great, Chris. <laughs> oh, do you have one, Vincent? Do you I have don't. One? I should probably get one. Yeah, I'll, I'll autograph it for you. Huh? You can sell it on eBay. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, I'm just kidding. What's the next question? Um, definitely, I think one of the questions that people have been asking a few people is about, you know, heating up cream and is that necessary? And, you know, yes. you were talking about it, but the temperature contrast between that caramel and your cream is, is very important. <laughs> yeah, the reason you heat up the cream and butter and all that because if that's cold, you drop it into the hot sugar, it's going to seize up that sugar and everything's going to be stuck at the bottom of your pot. So it's essentially like getting it used to being hot before it gets super special. Is there any other questions there? Are we went behind our questions? No, no vanilla? No, you can. You can if you want. I said that earlier. 
What, what kind of vanilla do you really use, Chris? Uh, for you know, for caramel, I think the Tahiti style is best. I think Tahiti uh, vanilla is too sweet for ice cream, for my taste. But with chocolate and caramel, the sweetness is really, really nice with it. So yes, I, this would be great for Tahiti vanilla. It's just up to you. The world's your oyster. It's a blank canvas. Uh, these things, as long as you get the technical side correctly, if you want to flavor it with something. Um, for a little backing note, feel free to do it. You see how the bubbles are changing? So I always tell my cooks to look out for that too. It's just so it gets in your sense memory, so you know what's going on at all times. And you also get your all your senses tuned to this too. You know, whether it be the sense of smell or sight, or even sound sometimes. What else? We got other questions. Uh, hard or soft? Somebody's asking hard or soft, and you embarrass my camera lady. Uh, this is a soft, chewy caramel. How dare you? Okay, what's next? Somebody give me the finger. Oh, it's the thumb. Okay. Is someone taking vanilla? How many people do we have on here? 16. Miss Sanchez Pastry, what temperature are you cooking the caramel to? 117. Oop. You know what? We just lost power here. So hang on. Can you grab 2.0 and have them climb the ladder? We just lost a little power here. So let me flip a switch and we'll get back to cooking this, okay? In the meantime, I can answer some questions. Okay. Uh, blah, blah, blah. What will happen if you use 58% chocolate like cacao berries, me and Mira? It'll taste terrible. That's how. That's what will happen. Did someone say vanilla? That's taking some gold or down in Long Beach. Um, did somebody say crisp? Crisp? The crisp? You see that? See, I am the ultimate pitch man. I'm going to say crisp as much as possible in this broadcast. Okay. Hey, Chris, so while you're waiting for your pot, yeah. can I just quickly do these turtles? Yeah, go ahead. Do it. Do it. So I cooked the caramel. So a couple of different temperatures. I went to 112, I went to 114, I went to 117 like Chris asked for. Um, you know, as you can see, this is kind of the consistency of the, the sugar cooked to 117, right? It's pretty firm. But for something like this, which is uh, the pecan turtle, right? So pecans, the mm -hmm. caramel, and chocolate. You want something a little softer, right? So using the same caramel that Chris made and without adding the chocolate, we're just going to cook it to 114 and heat it up. I have, I have it right here, over here. And again, you know, I have pastry bags. So I just want to show that you don't necessarily need a pastry bag to do this, right? You can just do it with a spoon, right. and yep. literally and you can just drop it. On top. So this is your caramel that I cooked to 114, right? Okay, so this is a good lesson. It goes to show you the final texture by how low or how, or how high you, you cook it. So, Definitely. I mean, you. I mean, you could use this as like a, you could cook this down to like one nine, maybe one ten. Nope. Your same caramel and just use it to like drizzle well, on no, top of ice cream or whatever. It's a crisp. You see how the bubbles have gone away, and it looks uh, more like um, lava. One sixteen, and one degree, by the way, in sugar temperature is like a mile. Okay. So it, there's a huge chasm between uh, 116 and 117, and as you see Vincent's uh, result for 114, uh, that is a uh, massive difference in the finished product. Okay, 116. We wanna go to 117 and just make sure it's 117 for about two to three seconds. We'll turn the heat off. There's 117. 117, and off, okay? And now, Floor to sell. You, if you don't have floor to sell, you can use, uh, you know, regular sea salt. I think floor to sell is best for caramel. I, I try my best to be authentic with everything I do, and uh, I'm a huge fan of uh, Henri Leroux, uh, which is a uh, carmelier in uh, in uh, Brittany, France. Uh, and uh, so, you know, they're using all the uh, kind of local ingredients um, that they find in Brittany, and one of them is uh, the sea salt off the uh, English Channel that they share. Uh, with the UK. Okay, so one thing that's interesting about this chocolate, it's low in cocoa butter, and even though we cooked a lot of water out of this caramel, 
the chocolate still feels that that's water. So you have to really thoroughly agree that chocolate into the caramel base, okay? Because it's not. But it smells really great, by the way. So this chocolate is melt is is designed with lower cocoa butter, so it will not melt. Okay? But it's going to melt because I'm forcing it to melt. But you've got to be very very thorough in how you incorporate it. So not only am I going to use the crisp for this, I'm going to use a spatula to make sure that everything is incorporated because you don't want any streaks of chocolate and you want the entire caramel to taste super chocolatey. So this one, if anybody knows who the great pastry chef uh, Jacques uh, Genin is in Paris, you know, he, he's not super innovative like all the new guys that are there. He's just very, very good at what he does. But he's also famous for his caramel. And you know, if you ever have any aspirations to be anybody, all you have to do is, is start with the guys who are that you most admire, the real masters at what they do. And for me, uh, the, the the best that I know um, in the world at uh, making caramels are Jacques Jean, Henri Leroux, and that is H E H E N R I L E R U X Leroux. And um, as far as the best chocolatiers. Uh, no, you can begin and end with uh, Patrick Roger. So I always wanted to do, just kind of be what they are. They're not super innovative. Just everything they do is just perfect. So, you know, I always tell my cooks that you don't have to be uh, super, super innovative. You just have to be good at what you do. Okay, so that's it for the caramel. No reason to put other flavors in here like cilantro, okay? Which is my least favorite flavor in the entire world. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> Vincent, are you a so that wasn't your day yesterday. Oh, no, no. It no. wasn't your day yesterday then, huh? Well, I love Mexican food, but I will not eat cilantro. Okay. Okay, there's the caramel. Okay, going into the frame. And I'm going to show you the bottom of the pot, how clean it is. Okay? Because that's important to you. Okay, so here it is, going into the frame. Thanks, Coco Tour. <laughs> What's that? That looks really nice, Chris. Okay, so I'm going to take some of it here and spread it onto the soap bath. And you have time, you know, this is not like a patch of the three that, you know, is being set when you, as soon as you have the acid and you have to get into the frame. You have some time to make sure it gets into the frame. And if it's not level, you know, you can just the next day put a piece of paper, parchment paper, or another silk pad and use a rolling pin to kind of even it out a little bit. But you see that texture that we're developing here as a cool I don't have that okay. okay, so I'm going to take, you see the caramel, the texture of the caramel. Comes right off. Still very flexible. Okay, so I'm cutting this 37.5 millimeter by 15. Okay, so I'm going to keep my silk pad here. Now here's one thing that you never want to do is break a screen on, on video or film. Because that makes it the blue for real. See when you do these like the TV shows here in LA Vincent, they can edit out all the bad stuff. Of course. It hits the cutting room floor. Okay, so, so what are the measurements on your guitar right now? This is 37 and a half millimeter right here. Okay. See how it moves. So I have to change the frame for 15 and a half millimeters. Any more questions coming in? But you see it's beautiful, no? So this will make about 175 pieces. So if you want to cut the recipe in half, it's easily cut in half. Okay, so, look, I did loosen the string. Didn't break it. We can fix that. Okay, and now 15 millimeters. That's part for a fashion house. Okay, so you need the B card for packing. I think. 
think, uh, yeah, I mean, time is money, right? And this thing pays for itself. So, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're cutting it by hand, you cannot get the uh, accurate sizes that we can get. Okay, so I'm gonna give a little tip here so you, so you break less guitar strings. When you have firm, firm items that you're cutting, only do a few rows at a time. It'll kind of save you your chocolate is a little bit too cold. There we go. It'll it'll just save you from that torque from say the, the too much pressure being put on uh, the string back here on this side. Okay. All right. So then what we do is we just uh, look at that beautiful carbon. It's great. More questions? Is carbon still hotter than expected? Is there a way to fix it? No. So do it correctly. Don't fix the carbon, right, Vincent? Once it goes too hot, yeah. once it takes off, For sure. that's it. It's done. I mean, it's, it's, like, it's like if you add too much salt to your pasta, to your tomato sauce. You know, there's nothing more, nothing you can do at it, right? So there is a little bit of time, a little bit of time. Same idea. Just kind of take it easy. And now these kernels can go be wrapped. We're gonna, and we have, um, the other day we made uh, passion fruit, raspberry, vanilla, passion fruit, mango, raspberry, vanilla, um, and chocolate. So on Monday, on this, after the weekend, so we are going to uh, have a big wrapping part of all the sandwich. And we're going we're to get way ahead because, like I said, she's moving back to the Philippines. So we're going to make her wrap several thousand pieces before she goes back. Hey, Chris. Yes, sir. So, so what Chris is actually doing right now is not only is he doing a video, but he's on the chocolate caramel for the shop. <laughs> That's right. Which is great. <laughs> but I was going to say, like when year. you made your... Okay. Yeah, well, you know, that's pretty. Yeah, kitchen family. Yeah. Spend more time with them than our own family sometimes. Well, I have no family, which is great. So, people always ask me, like, uh, about getting into this business. And I always say to them that they want to, they, they ask me about, you know, changing careers or whatever. And I'm like, family, this is a great business. But if you like Saturday nights off and uh, movie nights with your family, I love uh, This is uh, not the business to get into. But for me, since I have a, a whole family of losers, uh, this was a great business for me. I wanted to get away from them, and I never had to spend another holiday with them. It was great. So. Any more questions Wait, coming? so you're not the black sheep of the family? Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, no, not at all. I don't know. Okay. So, uh, Chris, I was going to say that when you, when you finished your caramel earlier, right, with the chocolate, I, there's two things I wanted to point out on there. Um, one, some chocolate beers actually vermix their caramel at the end, especially if they've added an extra fat, whether it's in terms of like butter, cocoa butter, you know, chocolate. We do that so you too. Get, get a tighter emulsion. Yes, we do that too. Yes, correct. Okay. We do that uh, so. with our vanilla caramel because we, we add um, um, a much smaller amount of salted butter to our vanilla caramel, but we also add less to it. Lecithin does it absorbs any excess water that's hanging around in the recipe, and um, right. you know we don't mind if we bite into a piece of lecithin. It's lecithin powder, not, not lecithin liquid. So. Right, the lecithin powder mixed in with the cocoa powder. Exactly, exactly. So I do have a cocoa okay, okay. So we'll fix that off camera. How about that? You do that. You never saw it. Yeah. Uh, that in exactly. editing. Uh, and another like thing, Julia too, Child would like uh, put a duck in the oven, and then five minutes later pull it out and it's fully roasted. Yeah. Same idea. Exactly. But you still catch her cursing on screen every now and then, right? Exactly. Love Julia Child. This is Julia Child from Los Angeles, California. What up, the tunes? She was actually even taller than I am. 
Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, over in at CIA Copia in North County, San Francisco, in Napa, right? They have a whole yeah. exhibit on Julia Child. It's pretty amazing. Oh, do that. Yeah, at yeah, the CIA. Yeah, so one of my first heroes. And for those who, who don't know anything about me, I came, I am from a family of chefs, so I have to, that shows you how crappy our family was. Is that we all wanted to get away from our family around holiday time. So, so Tom, Mark, and myself. Rhonda became an English teacher and, and a, uh, had a master's in English and, and became like a published author. So she was the smartest one. So do you have any more questions coming in that I can answer on changing guitar string? What percentage? Yes. It's just it's just different for the ones you want. So, um, I mean, it, 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 every caramel is a different formula and different temperature. So, I'll give you an example, like the passion fruit mango uh, recipe, we cooked that to 124. The same recipe we use for raspberry, we cooked to 122. Okay, because it's all raspberry puree versus amount of passion fruit puree and a partial amount of mango puree. There's much more water in uh, passion fruit puree than there is in raspberry puree, hence the uh, lower temperature to, it, to get the same texture. So that's a good question, but it's a different formula. So Chris, you finish this damn turtle already. Okay, you do the turtle. All right, well, it was really easy because I use his awesome caramel, which you can see right here, right? You see how well it holds up? I mean, cooked to 117, right? It's awesome. I really I really like this caramel, and I have a whole bunch of caramel recipes, but this is great. But uh, so I cooked it to 114 for the, the turtle, and then literally all I'm going to do is I'm going to add some tempered chocolate. And I know, like, some people don't know how to temper chocolate, right? So you do. You just have the pistols, you know, you can just heat them up in the microwave for like you know, 10 seconds at a time and stir, and if you don't get out of temper, then you'll be okay. And then you just literally, with a spoon, with a piping bag, whatever it is you want to do, just place it on top, right? And if you need to bang out on the tray to flatten it, then you do that. Um, but I think like Chris was talking earlier, right? So that's really quickly like that. And then for Mother's Day, you know, just play around doing a heart, you know? I mean, so simple, but, you know, yeah, that's I would appreciate it, because it's really yeah, you know, you I'm not sure if it's really. Yeah. Before the chocolate sets, you can add another sprinkle of fleur de sel, and you can call these sea turtles. Yeah. <laughs> so somebody's asking nice. if they can save the video. Vincent, tell them where they can see the video and do it again. So. Yeah, so definitely it's going to be on, on LinkedIn, and then I'll, I'll make sure to edit it and send, you know, Chris will have a copy and it'll be on YouTube. But yeah, I mean, you guys got to see Chris Harvey working. And he's usually just, you know, chatting up and back office, and forth. You know, exactly. <laughs> I complain about my family. I do, I do a lot of comedy. What else? I drink ice. I get lunch. I do that's, about, that's about it. So Kyle Marie, can you do anything to stop the sticking? See, he's, that's my buddy. He, he's, listen, uh, he's from England. And he has the thickest English accent you ever heard. So Kyle, if you're still there, oh, I that's how he speaks. Um, I spray the guitar with hand spray. Do you need a guitar to cut? You can cut it by hand if you want. What percentage of rate? So I think we answered those. Two caramels, what the ratio? Mar Mar marijuana? No, marijuana, Ramon. He's the absolute white sheep. Thank you. Dudes, Anna Christabel. I think she's in Malaysia. No, she's in, um, I think she's in Singapore. So low, she's a long time follower. Moon Bakery's laughing at something. Oh, like my Julius. Oh, the person you should know. Uh, Chris, spell my name incorrectly from Morocco. Salam alaikum. Keep a halak. People are surprised that I can speak a little bit of Arabic. Do, no bricks for carnivals. No, just temperature. And there's the sun. Nice video. Paul from uh, Barona, Hussein. And there, I think you did something with Mayo, didn't you? Mayo, the dish chef of BW. How do you say your name? Yeah. Yes, a very nice lady. She, we, we, we DM quite often. Good. So she did your first one, right? Or your second one? Yeah, one of the first ones we, we worked on together. She was, great. She was like, she had headphones on, she was yelling in her kitchen. It was hilarious. 
<laughs> she's also an, an amazing person. So for those who don't know, she's been donating her time making sweet treats for all the healthcare workers in San Francisco. So very cool. I'll just say May, okay? But she's really an amazing person. So I'm very impressed with her work, her work ethic, and uh, just as a, as, as a person in general, she's a great person. And if somebody wants to see us wrap one, so here's where she's going to take over. So get some plastic. Oops. Okay. She's going to show you how to wrap these. And then we're going to clean out the out of here. Because I still have to go to Whole Foods for dinner. Where am I from? Uh, I'm, uh, we're both here in California. But what, if you're probably asking, why do I know how to speak Arabic? You want to see April there? Wearing her mask. Because a bunch of Moroccans taught me how to do it. Okay. Roll it. We know how to roll things here in California, people. Okay. Daniel's laughing over there. Look at that. That is how you roll. That's it. Thank you. All right. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys. We'll get through this. Play as a team. We will be over this.